Good morning and welcome. Right, we're in Dumfries, in the centre of Dumfries, to go to... A museum. Dumfries Museum. Oh, that's the one, yeah. Uh, it says so on, on there. <laughs> and camera obscura. Now, we're not sure what this is. The museum is free, the camera isn't. But I think it's like some kind of telescope or something. Some famous telescope. Not sure. Um, it opens at 10. It's one minute past 10. And we're ready. Yeah. Looking forward to this because there's some quite exciting things in here, including bones of Robert the Bruce, the King of Scotland. Wow. wow. So we're starting at the very top of the museum. It's like a, I think it used to be an old windmill, they said. And you go up lots of spirally steps to get up here. There's a school, a lot of children, school children at the bottom, so they've advised us to start at the top, which we're doing when we've got his breath back. So on this top floor, not really seeing anything exciting about, apart from a wonderful telescope there, look. Now upstairs they have something, the museum is free. They have something upstairs called the camera obscura. And we're still not sure what it is. It's like, I don't know. It's something we, you have to pay for and we're not. We're not, are we? No, we're not paying. So we don't know what it is. No, I don't know what it is. <laughs> like if we knew it had like Bouncy Castle as well up there or a slide or something, we'd go up, but we don't know. So that's what the place did look like. A little windmill there. And then the sails went off it and some dude, this guy here, made it like this, like it is today, and put stuff in it. Are you happy now? Yeah, it's interesting. It is interesting. Now that's a hammer. Oh no, it's wood there. I'm, I'm desperately looking for a good hammer, but it has to have a wood handle and like a metal top. That's all wood. What is this, Mazzy just said? Now I'll show you it first so you guys can guess. But my guess is it's a drill. And you'd obviously have a drill bit on there, and you'd literally just pull that and it would turn it around and drill in. Number 13, Mazzy, have you found it? Yeah. <clears throat> what does it say? Let's go reaction speed Reaction drill. speed drill. <laughs> All right, again. Do you know, my dad's the best one of these in his shed. I know he's got one of these in his shed. We thought that was going to be something really special. It's a lovely old door. But it's just the door from a blacksmith's. And they used to put the name on it. As you can see, Forrest was his name. Yeah, but it can't talk, can it? It's never going to be able to talk. It's lovely. So this is a cross head off a cross stone from the 10th century. That is really old. We're talking like Viking days, I think. Hodham Collegiate Church. Can someone please tell me what this word is all about? How do you pronounce it? What is it? Because we've been to a collegiate church and I've never ever heard of the word collegiate and I've been to a lot of churches. That's very old, that's a thousand years old. Do you think this is real? Of course that's real. <laughs> that's definitely real. I think we should just go straight downstairs, love. Do you yeah, the children are just having a little talk down there. This is just like blacksmithing things, but downstairs it says sacred stones. The sacred stones room. Wow, wow. Are you impressed down there? Yeah. Wow, if you like stones, this is the place to come. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but you've got like grave markers in here from the 13, 1400s, a grave mark from the 1100s, one with a sword on it there in the background, and this amazing thing. Not sure where that's from. They've got signs up here, but it doesn't really tell you which is which. We thought that were old upstairs, Mazzy. Yeah. That was, I think, the 10th century, the one upstairs. Look at this. This is the 2nd century. Oh, oh, what, what, how old does that make 
that makes that 1800 years, uh, 1800 years old. Wow. And it's from a Roman centurion. But he might not have been Roman. They reckon he could have been born in Germany or France. Wow. This again. Look at this. These are really old. Where have they got them from? That was a good spot, Mazzy. Well done. These, my friends, are suicide stones. Now, these are from one lockhead. You know, the highest, te yeah. highest village. Yeah. They're from there. Now, in the olden days, and believe it or not, up to just 50 years ago, they still did this. A lot of people who committed suicide weren't allowed to be buried in the churchyards. They'd bury them out of the way because they committed suicide and they shouldn't have done. God wouldn't have liked that. And these are two stones from the 1700s um, from suicide victims. That is an amazing grave marker from 17, uh, 700 AD. I don't know much more about it. You can read about it if you want, but it's too many words for me. And then back here, you've got some Celtic things. That's a Celtic head. That's a Celtic head with Roman influence, apparently. Yeah, they're pretty good. And you've got a heart there. And that's used in the Douglas, uh, the Douglas family, part of their el emblem. So that will be, if you're a Douglas, if your last name's Douglas, that's something to do with you. And that is 600 years old. Have you found anything else exciting yet? You do like the heart, yeah. I'm getting annoyed here. I'm, get, I'm getting the feeling I'm missing out. Hodham Collegiate Church. I need to go there, but it can't be in Dumfrieshire because I've not seen any signs for it. But there's a lot of fantastic graves and grave markers and things come from there. So yeah, loads more stones. Can't really be bothered showing you them all, but... Some of them are great, some of them are a bit... Look at that, that's a really bad sword, is that? Some of the designs on them are pretty amazing. Right, we're going to go upstairs now and probably get stuck with the kids. <laughs> what does that say? Duris dear, Duris dear. I think that's a place. Got some traps here. <laughs> A mouse trap. I've never seen one like that before. And I've found loads of them in the metal detecting. I love to find them and get them out of the ground. Uh, mole catchers, mole traps. If you've got some hens and the fighting, you want to get yourself some of these, some hens spectacles. You put them over the hen's eyes and it stops them fighting. Wow. So the first proper interesting part we've come to Oh, you've got some really old posse rings and things there. They're very nice. And then you've got two books there. And they're old. They're like... One of them's 1682. And the other's 1734. A bit mouldy. But very nice. See that there? That little pot thing. Do you know what that was used for? I can see the writing and yeah. You can imagine what they did, can't you? If you read the writing there, guys, it was for constipation in Victorian times. All I can imagine is they stuck that up your bum and someone would suck on the other end or something. Suck? Eww. That's all I can think and I feel a bit sick. That's minging. We have some death masks for you from 1849 to 1860. Eight. All these people were murderers, guys. Murderers. You can read about them there. Apparently quite a famous murder couple or something, them two. And there you've got a prison lock from 1802 from Dumfries, from the old prison. Absolutely huge keyhole and keys. Can you imagine carrying them around with you? Check this leg shackle. Imagine carrying that yeah. around with you. Look at that, what a beauty. You've got some old and very weird letters in here. 
And they're old, these are really old. This letter here is to Dumfries magistrates telling them to arrest five women who they want to try for witchcraft. And then you come down here, this guy they think was a spy, so they wanted him caught. This is an order of the sheriff of Dumfries, 1685. And that is ordering that Janet, a girl found guilty of stealing a pair of stockings, is to be burnt on the left hand with a hot iron, whipped and banished from the town. Wow! This is 1685, that letter. I can't say I really understand this, because that's a policeman's baton there, okay? That's a policewoman's baton. Now, you'd think the woman would have a bigger baton than, ma than the man. She's got more protection to need, need to do, but she has a tiny little thing. That won't even hurt, honestly. I'm going to try not to go into too much detail. There's just too many things. Them two are manuscript pages from the 14th century. And you've got all these here, look. These are communion tokens from like the 1500s, 1600s, 1700s. Quite special. Some shackles and handcuffy things here, look. When you think of the people's hands that have been inside them. And up here, this is a cross beam from the gallows. This is where people were hung from. And did you know, Mazzy, the last man and woman in Scotland to be hung were hung here. Here? This building? Here. Well, in Dumfries. Oh, okay. Quite possibly from that very gallows cross beam. In fact, the will have been hung from that because this is the newspaper cutting from the hanging. It was uh, Mary Timney, 1862, and Robert Smith, 1868. They were the last man and woman to be hung in Scotland. He was done for raping an 11 year old. Uh, she was done for murdering her neighbour, Anne. But between them dates, it says about it here, look. Between them dates is the same date they used this. Something in there, Mazzy, about snuff. 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 You know, like... Snuff. Things you snuff up. There's like a grinder, things that you grind in and things you put them in. Have you ever had snuff? A little bit, my dad is. Really? I, I was just going to say, I don't think he can even get it anymore. But yeah, I don't know. He, yeah. I don't know, I've never tried snuff, but I'd like to because it was a very popular thing, wasn't it, back in the day? We have a cabinet full of apprentice pieces here. Would you like to explain what apprentice pieces are, Mazzy? That's where, like, the shopkeeper man would go round with little examples of stuff he sells. Correct. It's basically, he couldn't carry a big saddle around with him all the time, so it just, you know, they used to do it with like cupboards and wardrobes and things. They'd just have like a little doll's house sized one and take it into the shops. So there's a picture of his saddle, what he would carry around, and this guy's clogs, tiny little clogs. So Dumfries had a town crier who retired in 1861, but he would walk around with this lovely drum. This was his drum, and that was his bell. So what noise does a town crier make, Mazzy, when they're trying to get people's attention? They're laughing. Oi, 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 I beg your pardon? Oi, 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 oi! Oi, 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 oi! I don't know! I always thought it was, oh, yay, oh, yay! That's what I were always... It might be different in north and south of England. Where I come from, I'm pretty sure it's, oh, yay, oh, yay! I've got some news for you. Gather round. I've got to tell you stuff. Butter's gone up in the shop, but the milk's gone down. I don't know what they used to shout. World War II German helmet for you. I've got one of them. There's quite a lot of World War I things in here because of the centenary of the end of it coming up. 2018, obviously. But this, I like this. I like seeing these. This is one of the biscuits. That is one of the actual biscuits from World War I, what the soldiers used to have which um, apparently were pretty unedible. What's this one here, this hand grenade? A disarmed grenade made into a lamp base. That's pretty cool. 
That was a good spot, Mazzy, well done. Look at these crucifixes. Can you tell what they're made out of, guys? You've got two bullets. Two bullets, one stuck on the back of the other. You've got a German, taken from a German belt buckle, is the middle round bit. And then Jesus hanging off to make two crucifixes. Do you know why I'm going to show these? Medjula. Here you go, Medjula. Or should I say, me Martin? A few more examples of what Medjula wants for Christmas. You haven't got long now if you haven't already got one. She's got a lovely new craft room. I saw her decorating it, and she needs one of these to go in it. Beautiful spinning in wheels. Spinning in 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 spinning in 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 spinning. It's a wheel. What spins? Or you could even get one of these. I never knew they used to do that, but apparently they used to wear morning dresses. Wonder what they wore in afternoons. <laughs> so you've got a few things down here which belonged to Thomas Carlyle. Now I have to apologise, there is a place in Dumfriesshire called Thomas Carlyle's Birthplace or something, a museum, which I decided not to go to because it, it just sounded really boring. Um, didn't interest me. So if there's any Thomas Carlyle fans out there, I'm really sorry, but here's a little something to give you. A few of his possessions. You just sounded boring. Oh, teachers getting mad with children. Not me. Now I have seen these before, but I didn't know anything about them. It's like a stone ball, and they're exclusive, apparently, it's, if you read about it here. Pretty much exclusive to Scotland, and nobody knows what exactly they're used for. What would your guess be, Mazzy? Don't marbles. Marbles? I was thinking a kid's game. Yeah. But they're trying to say it's something to do, it might be something to do with funerals or something. Mm. I think it's a kid's game, don't you? Probably. Yeah, Scottish kid's game. Lots of prehistoric things, axe heads and things. I've got one. I've got a really cool one. I think mine's a bit like that, actually. I got that from John, down in Cornwall. Minerals what light up in the dark. We do like them. What if I can buy one? Wonder if what? I want to buy one. You want to buy one? Yeah. That's well cute. I like the green one. Yeah. <laughs> it's ultraviolet light that makes it glow, not glow in the dark. That's what I said. <laughs> ultraviolet glow in the dark. Same thing. It's not, it's not. And here you've got some dinosaur footprints. They all seem to come from Apple Girth, which I'm not sure if that's where I've been and seen some footprints of dinosaurs in Scotland, but uh, yeah. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in a video the other day, I was going to. You've got a red squirrel there, which is native to Britain. And then you've got the big, bad North American squirrel, now the grey ones. These were introduced from North America in the 1800s and basically they're just killing all the red ones. We've hardly got any left. They seem to be getting pushed further and further up north and you, you only really see them in Scotland nowadays. The good old red squirrel. That's the one thing I've always wanted to find metal detecting and never have. And there it is attached to the handle, that's what it would have looked like, a little axe head. Some lovely bronze figurines there. Found in the armour's furnace. Here in Hoddam. I want to go to Hoddam. If you ever wondered how they made buttons, there you go. Little moulds there. And they'd come out looking like that. That's really nice. So what is it, Mazza? You tell me. Robert the Bruce's, well, this is a replica of his skull. It's a cast. A cast of Robert the Bruce's yeah. skull. Yeah, apparently, they never had no photos or paintings of him, so they reconstructed his face, which is this here. This one there. Oh, he's ugly. Yeah. Why is he so ugly, Mazzy? Because he had leprosy, and that's why all his mouth is smashed in on the skull. Ah. 
So Robert the Bruce. And he's now using him. Like, You'd expect him to look like a gallant warrior or something. Yeah. But by the time he died, he, he looked like that. <laughs> it looks like him off Star Wars. Is it Star Wars, the guy with leprosy? Don't <laughs> I should imagine, as a metal detectorist in Scotland, that would be your ultimate find. A Robert the Bruce. Robert the First, Robert the Bruce coin. Wow. Just checking these out in here, all these metals which have been found. And a lot of them come from Lom uh, Wan Lockhead, where we've been, and Lead Hills. And I reckon that crown there, um, the lead it's made from probably comes from Lead Hills. So we've got a log boat here. This is about 4,000 years old, a boat. And you know where they found this, Mazzy? You know the castle we went to, um, next to a lock? Um, there, in that actual lock. We couldn't see the lock because it was too, too misty that morning. But they found this in the lock. Just in case you don't know what a miner's helmet looks like, there's one which the sound found in a sack of coal in 1965. So that was Dumfries Museum. What did you think of it? Really good. It was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, marks out of ten. So yeah, a good day. Eight. Yeah. I'll give it. I'll give it an eight. Um, the lower floors are much better than the top floors, but it is a very nice museum. Enjoyed that one. It's got to be a good eight, good night, and uh, maybe nine even because it was free as well. And very nice staff, and it yeah. is free, yeah. So get yourselves to Dumfries Museum. We've got like an hour's left, an hour left to get into the Robert Burns House Museum. I don't know if we're going to do it or not, but we're going to try. So we'll say goodbye to you very quickly, and we're going. Bye, guys. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>